I'm Scott Hannes. I'm the director of user instrumentation and facilities here at the National High Magnetic Field Lab. And I work with all the users who come and actually run an experiment in here in the magnet cells where the actual work is done. The reason people come here to the magnet lab is not just the magnetic fields, but the facilities we have to put in them, the sample environment we call it, which may be a combination of temperature or pressure or types of measurements. We have a cryostat that extends in a long narrow tube into the narrow bore of the magnet. They allow us to go down to a few tenths of a degree above absolute zero. We also have furnaces we can go up to several hundred degrees above room temperature. So we have a wide range of sample environments that we provide to the experimenter. What do they put in the magnet? Almost anything. We've measured the strength of epoxies, we've measured steels and looking at changes with heat, we've looked at green boundary growth in zinc, we've looked at semiconductors like in your electronic circuit, things that are um, superconductors, the experiments usually attach on a long stick. To be technical, we call them probes. And on there, we put whatever we need to do to manipulate the sample, to change its angle in the magnetic field, to change its temperature. We put a little heater down there, thermometers. We measure their length as it changes in magnetic field down to basically atomic scale changes. And this whole thing goes in a vacuum tube that we put on top of our cryostat and we lower it down. Then the whole end of the cryostat, all these little wires coming out that bring our signals, are connected to a rack of instrumentation. Various amplifiers and voltmeters and current meters. The usual way of taking data is fix the temperature and change the magnetic field, taking data of what changes in their sample as the magnetic field changes, or sit at a fixed magnetic field, ramp the temperature, over a region of interest where they see a certain type of phenomena. The equipment rack is connected to a computer which will record this all, which they can analyze as they look at the data, make decisions on how to change the temperature, what temperature to do next. So it's very interactive. This isn't something where they push a button and the data all flows out and it's all pre-planned. The data they then take home, they write their paper and publish it and hopefully give us some credit for providing this facility for them to uh, use. How much space do you have in there for the experiment? The bores of these magnets, they're 32 millimeters. Well, that's a fairly good inch and a quarter type distance. But then we have to put the cryostat in there. We have to put insulation to insulate. And I may need to put a cell that compresses the sample. And if I need to rotate the whole thing, I may be down to fractions of a millimeter for this uh, sample. Depending on what we do, the samples can be very, very tiny, but we are very clever at designing experiments that can use the smallest chunk of sample that we can fit in there in the sample environment we need to.